How you going, design thinkers? My name is Matthew Sear, and we are going to be jumping into Figma's new features, and we're going to be covering variables. And in this particular one, I'm going to be covering the spacing token and how we can actually create dynamic spacing in our designs using the new variable system. So if that interests you, then sit back, relax, and let's jump into the video. All right, here we are inside of Figma. Let's get into the new feature and variables. So if you haven't understood variables, basically, ideally, if you've seen any of my past videos, especially the one where I did about buttons, I talked about something which was called like your quarks and atoms. Now, then Figma conference came by and they changed the whole piece, but in the end, Basically what I was referring to as the quark Figma's new variables is basically what we've got going on here and We're gonna actually start to define a couple of the core attributes Those core little fundamental bits and pieces for our thing. So for example, like our button over here We have our padding we got some colors and we got some gap spacing. We got some corner. We also got that outline, the outline thickness. These are all attributes that can be adjusted, changed, modified, updated. And I'm going to be targeting in this video specifically spacing tokens. Let's just call it like spacing variables. And then let's look at how we can actually make these spacing variables one bit better by basically introducing a layered approach. So what really is this and why do I care? For example, I've got my mobile, my tablet and my desktop. And now I have this new button and this new button has a scalar on it. And as I adjust my button across to the different sizes, it actually can adjust the spacing within it. This is something that we can easily achieve to allow our designs to grow and shrink based on the screen size. For example, if you're doing web-based applications and if you're programming it, you could use something which is called REM and that would give you an actually a uh, scalar based on the font. This could be something similar, but at least a little bit more flexible and dynamic. So what does that kind of look like? I'm about to show you a bit of an intense screen, but if I was to go up the top here, by the way, variables are located at the top. Click that. Here's your variables, your variable collections. I can click over here and I can select my scaling parameter. Now I have this massive collection of numbers. It looks a little daunting, but don't worry. It's not as bad as it looks. It just takes a little bit of time to set up. Basically, I've got a small screen. I've got a medium screen and I've got a large screen. And as a designer, I use the rule of four and I increment by two. So every one of these is incrementing up by two. For example, I chose a number to do my scaling and I usually go from the smallest to the biggest. So if I'm working, for example, on a mobile, I would usually have a couple of numbers that I'm familiar with that I work with. So that's why I named it that way. Now, how you name it, completely up to you. But for example, if I'm doing spacing, I consider spacing from the smaller size and then I let it scale up to the larger size. I understand that it will adapt and scale up to the way that I intend it to for larger screens. If I was to pick, for example, a 16, I'm picking a 16 in size for a small screen. And then what takes place is it starts on a small screen, 16. It goes to a medium screen, it turns to an 18. And then when it gets to a large screen, it turns to a 22, which is really cool because that means that the spacing 
will continually incrementally get larger based on the screen size. So how do you set this up? You only need three columns. And then of course you can put the own incremental values in the way that you seek to use them. I would recommend either a scaling point of two or a scaling point of four. Anything more kind of ends up being quite a leap above. Let's have an actual play and let's see if we can do something very simple, very small, kind of take this to a smaller level instead of having this massive scale and we'll start from scratch and build this. All right, I'm gonna come up to the top here. I'm gonna create my collection. Okay, I am actually going to call, maybe I'm going to make this one a specific scalar just for my buttons. So what I can do is I can call this button scaling. And what I want is basically my number. And I'm going to actually just call this... Um, I'll give it an S for small. I'll create another one. This will be an M. And this will be a large. And I want to have one for my small screen. The reason why I'm using small screen over, for example, saying mobile, tablet, and desktop. It's because really in the end, it's just the screen that's changing size. So I'd rather keep it agnostic rather than making it so specific that it has to be a small screen. And it gets rid of the definition of that it has to be a mobile by calling it mobile. So I'll do my small screen. I'll do my medium screen. And I will do my large screen. Beautiful. So we got that. Now I got my small. Let's say I will grab this button. I'll detach this button. I'm not going to really remake the button. I don't need to do so. I just need to remove the values pretty much. All right, so here's my new button. I remove those values. The values are not there no longer. Easy. So let me say that this is gonna be my large button. I want my button to hug. There we go. My text is also hugging, great, awesome. What I'm going to do is I see that I have 24, 24, and I got 14, 14, 14. Okay. Now you'll notice that there are two values here. So what I might need to do is actually either group these as two separate groups. So let's look at the groups for the vertical to start with. So I might call this, for example, something like small vertical now really it's completely up to you how you'd like to do this you could either group them as subgroups and use it as so there was also some fun ways we could look at as well layering them into one another but I'm not really going to do a lot of that bits and pieces a lot more complex so we're going to just go for this we're going to say that's your vertical group so on and what else I can actually do this and I can now stick that into an actual group there we go I can grab that same uh, I can now duplicate my group horizontal And now I have my horizontal group. And I can simply just change the name. All right, cool. 
So for vertical, I had 24, 24. Let's do that one. Let's do 24 by 24 for my large. Okay. So 24 there. Let's say that I'm doing it potentially by a rule of four. I can say maybe it's 20 there. And then this will be 16. And that will be four on the top. Cool. So what I can do, my large up the top here, I can do 14. And then this will be 10. And this one will be six. And what we got here for large, we are going with on my small scale, I'm going to look for, I don't know, something probably like eight, six, two. And that gives me basically a set of scalars. This gives me also another set of scaling. Maybe on the horizontal, it's gonna be a lot less. So I'll probably start with two, four, six. I'm just gonna throw in some just numbers. I'm not really gonna make this too specific. Eight. We'll go for 12 and we'll go to 14. And here, let's think about horizontal, probably maybe on the small end, we'll probably start at a two. Actually, we'll have to be bigger than eight or probably, actually maybe I'll start that one by four. Go by four, six, eight, and this one can be six, eight, 16. Cool. In the end, they're your numbers. They're whatever you want to pick. But I got these two, which is great. And now all I need to do is actually pick my button, grab down here, see there, I've got those two spacing there and go into my spacer. You'll notice that I basically got my horizontal size and I got I got my, basically my both my sizes. And I can apply them. So I apply that and I'll apply my vertical padding. And now that I've applied my padding, I can actually go into my new button sizes and I can got my small and what do we got? Medium. Did I apply the right one? Nope. Button scaling. My so we'll grab that. So, where is my button? There we go. Button scaling. My apologies. So we'll start with my small one, two, and then we will go down on my button scaling on the horizontal, and I will so add that one. So now I have my button scaling there. Got that. Now I can select it. Now I can go here. I can see that scaling is there. I can go large, so on. And now, simply, I could leverage the power of these layouts to specify that number. So if I drag this inside of here, you'll notice that this frame, I can click it, I can open up my layer, and I can actually specify what sort of scaling I want. I want a small. If I drag it in here, I can click this whole layer. I can click that. I can specify this to be medium. And I can drag it across into the large. And I can say, hey, I want you to also show scaling. I want you to be large. Now, 
it will change. Just to emphasize the point, I can simply just crank up this number here and Actually, I did it on the small, didn't I? So I'll make that 12, make that 24. And then... and what this does is it gives you basically two types of ways to scale up your designs. You can choose the size that you want to go with, which would be small, medium, or large for the spacing for this specific object. And then you can know that and be confident that the actual design itself will then adapt to your needs as it transitions to those different sizes. So I hope that this helps understand a little bit about how you can create tokens, how you can do spacing tokens, and also how we can actually use spacing tokens in a few different ways to create different ways for spacing to scale. Thank you for watching the video. Please comment, subscribe, and leave some comments. Let me know if this is helping you. I'd love to know so I can create more impactful content. Until next time, design thinkers, keep designing, keep building amazing things, and keep thinking amazing design ideas. And I'll see you all in the next video. All right, bye.